Quilters Newsletter TV, The Quilters Community, is brought to you by Handy Quilter, designed by a quilter for quilters, and Husqvarna Viking, keeping the world sewing for over 140 years. From photo to finish, we visit digital textile artist Gay Lasher as she walks us through her process. So Gay, what kind of things are you looking for? When well, you're I'm looking out for angles, I'm looking for diagonals. Um, lots of times I look for different kinds of materials. Mm -hmm. So there's wood here, there's cement. So texture. Texture, really uh-huh, yeah, like. texture, uh-huh. Are you looking for value? Is no, not particularly okay. because the um, the the uh, process that I do really distorts so much that that's not important. Uh huh. Okay. When you're photographing, do you know what parts you might end up never isolating or it's all never <laughs> never? It's it's all a mystery till it happens. So you're just sort of operating on a more of a, an intuitive sense of what might work. Yeah, very what? intuitive. Okay. Are there certain shapes well, you're drawn I, to more I'm than kind those? of find that that whirly bit yeah. there kind of interesting, and the just the interaction of the shapes. Mm -hmm. And then, if you want to follow me over to that truck over there where the glass is, okay. I wanted a picture with all the ropes. Thank you. So here you're looking at the lines. I'm looking the at the ropes. lines and the intersections mm -hmm. and... And again, color, value, those are not the, it's just the shapes. No, because it all changes. Mm -hmm. You just never know what's going to happen. So do you often, do you just keep your camera in your car with you just in case uh, you run across a That spot would that be the ideal photograph? situation. <laughs> I wish I was that organized. <laughs> well, we've just been outside walking around photographing and I've looked at some of the images that we took and the image on the screen is the image that I'm going to work with. So I've taken the JPEG and I've opened it in Photoshop and that's where we are right now. So the first thing I do is to go up to Image, Adjustments, and Shadow Highlights. And I pretty much use for Shadow Highlights the settings that are already there. And I'm doing that to lighten up some of the dark areas so more of the color will come through when I make some of the other adjustments. The next thing I do is to go up again to Image, Adjustments, and change the contrast. And I do that pretty much by eye. So that's where we are. And then the next thing in this particular image, I'm going to go to the filters. And I'm using the artistic cutout filter. And if you remember, when we talked in the gallery, I said that this was how this whole process started because as you noticed, when the cutout filter opened, I could only see a small part of the entire image. And I'll um, move that image around a little bit for you so you can see that it is just a very small part of the entire image. The cutout filter sometimes flattens and dulls the color, so I usually then go to the adjustment that is hue and saturation to pump up the color, and that's what I'm going to do now. So now I'm going to hue and saturation, and again, I do this pretty much by eye. And as I move it, you can start to see color changes happening all across the image. So now I've done three things. I've adjusted the shadow highlights, I've adjusted the contrast, and I've uh, applied the um, cutout filter and adjusted the hue saturation. I'm going to apply another filter, which is called Render difference clouds and watch for the magic. 
that completely changes the whole colorway. That also darkens the image, so I'm going to go back to the adjustments to shadow highlights. And this time I'm not going to um, use the full amount that I had before. I'm just going to do it a little bit and then pump up the saturation again. Adjustments, hue saturation, and apply that. And that's all the adjustments I'm going to do to this image. But this image is now at 33%. So I'm going to increase the size to 100%. And then I'm going to scan the whole image for an area that I think is interesting. So I've zeroed in on this small area that will become the quilt top. And what I would be doing now would be um, to be copying and pasting just this area into a new image. At that point, I give the job over to my husband, uh, who has on his computer a program called Perfect Resize. Because the size of this image on the screen is only about three inches square and typically I'm enlarging to 36, 48 inches. And the beauty of Perfect Resize is that it will enlarge to those sizes without pixelation. In fact, it blurs all of the values really beautifully. This is the uh, paper-backed fabric that I use for printing. It comes on a roll from Jacquard Inkjet Systems, and I get it online after the last image that you saw on the screen, there's a lot of tinkering that goes on on the computer to try to get the color to match what is on the monitor. And that's quite a long process, um, but it's very important to me because what I see on the monitor is what I want to see on my quilt top. When I'm all through with the printing process, then the fabric peels right off of the paper backing. And then I have my four pieces of fabric and I trim the sides to about a quarter of an inch for seaming and carefully match them and sew the four pieces together on the sewing machine. And then I have my quilt top and I'm ready to put batting and backing behind it. And that's how I go from walking around outside and shooting photographs to bringing the photographs back into the studio and looking at them on the computer and playing with Photoshop manipulations, choosing an image and resizing it, printing it, and getting to the finished product. And then the best part, seeing it on the gallery wall. Quilters Newsletter TV, the Quilters Community, is brought to you by Handy Quilter, designed by a quilter for quilters, and Husqvarna Viking, keeping the world sewing for over 140 years.